All right, so from the comments section, someone says they're working on a Commodore 64 cassette player and they're using subdivision workflow. But their question is, uh, what is my approach when a solid presents booleans? Or basically when a, a mesh seems like it needs to use booleans uh, and I'm doing subdivision, what would I do? And the answer is probably not what you want to hear, but generally speaking, if something seems like it wants to use booleans, it's probably easier to create it with a boolean emulon workflow. And that's not always a bad thing. We'll get into that a little bit later on in the video. Uh, but I did record this while I was making it, just to give you an idea. It is Boolean and gun workflow, right? And it, it took uh, about 35 minutes to make. So it starts very quick. It's just a very basic shape here. So uh, it's a cube, bevel it, change the bevel profile to 0.5. Hard ops uses 0.7. And um, we got this going on. Next thing that's going to happen here, you'll see that the topology here is already working for those little details on the side. So I'm just going to inset those and you can hold control while insetting and push them in basically. Um, I'll do a select more and then um, select boundary loops and I beveled all these edges on the outside of this little area. I had some loop cuts as holding edges. I actually subdivide this one time or two times. And then I start um, doing some blocking out of this metallic area. Basically, I'm gonna start working that. And I do a loop cut here. I bevel it, or chamfer it, should I say. And um, I just delete it. And then I press A and F and fill it. So I got two cubes now. It's part of the same mesh, right? And do some more loop cuts in here. And you'll notice like this whole section just disappears really quick. Uh, there's an add-on called Punch It, right? That machine put out. If you buy the Machine Tools Deus Ex version, it has Punch It included in it. You hit Alt-E, it'll show up in the menu, right? And uh, so I just punch out this little section. Now, it's kind of like extrude non-manifold or extrude manifold or whatever. But what it does differently is that it'll cut all the way through the mesh. Okay, So sometimes you got to hit like the W key to enlarge it a little bit. So it'll actually do right. But um, once you do that, clean the mesh up afterwards. I did that twice for this little area uh, real quick. And now I'm just tweaking things there, adding some loop cuts and do a little edge adjustment so I can do an inset in that area. And I add another loop cut at the top uh, so I can create the little door basically. Now, depending on what the purpose of this model is, there might be a number of things to consider. Like, does this thing need to animate and like shoot a cassette out of it? That might be a possibility. But if it's just a simple prop that's on a table in a game, uh, you might not even do that, right? So when that door may not even need to, to uh, necessarily be a separate mesh, perhaps. But I did separate it anyways, and then started working out the little window section there, uh, like so. And so uh, the window section may be the limit on a prop. Like you might make it dusty and dirty, so that way you don't have to do all of the internals and the cassette inside of it as well. Uh, it's just a quick way to get around that. But if you wanted to go that little extra mile, do the cassette inside, possibly, and then um, make a cavity in it, et cetera, et cetera. Hood. And just boolean in the cavity in the big cube. Eventually, I do a boolean on this little round section in here as well, because it's just kind of showing up through the um, little buttons there. So I don't know if that's right or wrong, but that's what I did. So and I do one button, and I array it. So I'm not doing all of them. That's it, right? And then start working it, playing around with the shapes here. I got it a little bit wrong. I had to go back and fix it. And I'm adding bevels to these things. I'm doing weighted uh, normals. I'm just going to town, right? Tweaking the shapes and the sizes of things, repositioning them as needed. See here, I'm doing a cutout for the uh, little section over here. Creating that little switch or button or whatever. Working it all out. Doing an additional cut into it so I can add the reel, the counter or whatever it is. It's a little bit bigger. It gets pushed down. Then I'll add the little light here in a second. I was playing around with doing a, usually you can take a, um, you can do like an extrude along normals with a loop cut and then bevel that to create a bevel on a boolean shape. It didn't work out for me, so we'll take a look at that here in a second. 
probably could have spent more time on it, it would have worked out but there's our quad sphere cut off the bottom and then just give it some color real quick and the rest of this is just kind of tweaking everything add a little cylinder here cut it out drop in a uh, a screw that i already had made which is uh, capable of being subdivided so i subdivided of course and yeah that's pretty much it not much going on I, the glass is and I added off of the, uh, when I'm not recording, that's really simple. All right, so that shape there, that loop that runs around, or all the edges that run around here, you can literally press F and then P and separate that face and you can create a glass shape, basically. It's really simple. You just fill it. And then uh, it still has a solidify on it. So I actually did add a solidify to that one. The glass gets it as well. And then you add materials, which I did not during the recording. So a couple things to think about here is that as the intended purpose of this model, the way I was thinking about it anyways, I probably wouldn't need the internals, to be honest. Uh, but it would be baked from a high poly to a low poly more than likely, unless I'm using something like Unreal Engine 5 Nanite. Might be a different story. But uh, in this case, we're going to take a look at it in solid view with this uh, mat cap this normal one and this is like a way of previewing what your normals will look like if you have cavity on turn it off um, temporarily while you look at this and what you'll see is that it um a lot of these edges i went back i didn't do all of them but you need to add little tapers to them a lot of times because if this was a prop and it's part of a texture that's got other props included on that texture. So it's an atlas together with other props. What ends up happening though, is that if you don't have a big enough um, taper here, you can't see none of the, the normal for the most part, it kind of disappears. So that could be a little bit of a problem if it's a low resolution texture. You wanna go through and taper everything to about what you need it to be. You might overdo it. In some, some situations I accidentally overdo it and I have to go back and tweak it later, but um, in general, just keep that in mind. Taper things, it's going to look nicer. So all this got tapered here. You can see this outer one here didn't get tapered, and but the, the inner one did. Big difference between the two, right? And so that might be a little bit too much, though. Um, same thing down here. This one got tapered. This one got tapered, right? But these ones, these are kind of tapered. I added it. Um, you can sometimes taper with just a simple deform taper on like the Z axis. Um, on certain shapes, you can get away with that. It didn't work out too well there. I'd probably need to um, go back through and maybe uh, change the model around a little bit in that particular area. And so that's one of the few final touches there is to taper everything, right? And you can do that as you're working as well along the way. But also, where I was messing up with that bevel, I'm um, trying to, to create the bevel there anyways, I would probably collapse the mesh down later on and then just do it manually here real quick. And, and I wouldn't think twice about that, to be honest. Also, I guess I forgot to do a bevel modifier in here, maybe. Oh, no, I do. I have one, I think. So I'm going to bring that cutter back. Let's turn this mat cap off. It's too bright or <laughs> too crazy, should I say. All right, so yeah, this shape here, that's modeled in there, I guess. I, I just did a manual bevel. All right, that probably needs to be smoother. So, you know. Don't be afraid of looking at your mesh later on and then you know making tweaks and adjustments to it if needed. Sometimes you gotta do things over again. That is not looking too correct, but all right, anyway, so yeah, go around, tweak things as needed as as you find them. Um in some situations it's actually better not to have a bevel at all. And this is gonna bring us to that next point. When you're doing subdivision surface modeling, you're trying to make this whole thing. A lot of times you'll make it in the parts and the pieces and the components that it's actually made of in real life. You're not gonna just make everything as one solid big shape. That have a bunch of extra, it's gonna create extra work for you. Subdivision's already slower than Boolean and gun. And so it's gonna definitely make things even slower if you try to do something like that. So uh, what you can do though, is if you model things with Boolean and gun in just kind of a particular manner, you can actually convert them into a subdivision mesh using quadri mesh relatively fast. So. Um, this one, I didn't think about doing that from the start, so it's not quite the way it should be. But a lot of times you don't use the bevels, you leave sh edges sharp and whatnot. Um, but in this particular case, let's duplicate this. 
Shift D and then right click, and then right click again, convert to a mesh. I'm gonna pull it out over here real quick. I'm just gonna snap it to wherever it snaps to. I should probably try to line all these different components up to the grid at the origin points so that way um, I can move them over here and snap them all into place. But uh, Or we could take all of them and try to work them at the same time, perhaps. Anyways, so this is what we got going on. I'm gonna shade this auto smooth, okay? And for quad remesh, I'm gonna use normal splitting and turn off this one. And I'm just gonna change the uh, quad count up as high as it goes. You'll see here when we remesh this, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna look mostly okay. It's not gonna be perfect, but this wasn't set up for this either. So it's kind of, we'd have to go through and maybe adjust things maybe. All right, the shade is smooth now. And you can see these parts get destroyed, right? So a fun little fact here is because it's such a dense quad section, you can go through these areas, you can select them, and you can just delete them. Grab this whole loop, control F, grid fill it. So alt click it to grab the loop. Your edges are gonna be uneven more than likely. You can use machine tools alignment feature to kind of straighten them out real quick. If you don't, like if it's on a curve and you don't wanna mess it up, you can use machine tools surface slide feature, which is usually on the modes pie. I have a workaround I've set up to use it with quick favorites because I don't use the modes pie. But um, when you're in edit mode and the, you're using the modes pie, when you hit the tab key, what you'll see is that it has surface slide on that. Now, um, you can grab multiple edges in this manner and you can align them and just check um, each and you'll be able to do all of them at the same time as well. So that'll save you a little bit of hassle perhaps as you go through this. You do have to already spend a little time just selecting these things, right? But it's kind of a way you can go through and fix something real quick if you needed to, because you might want to do like this area later on, you might want to like inset it a little and then inset and hold control. Um, so when this subdivides again, you'll get this result. It's much cleaner and nicer than whatever this nonsense is. So you would add additional details perhaps later on, but not right away. Um, but once you do that, you can see a lot of this works out fairly well. You might have to tweak some corners and edges and stuff. Um, some things become a little bit wavy perhaps, but that really just depends on how you modeled it as well from the, from the base there. So it's not impossible to do a Boolean ingon model and turn it into a subdivision model. Now, of course, this isn't as optimized as it possibly could be. It's not the same as if we did this manually perhaps, um, but it's, it's super fast. It's fairly effective. So um, anytime you're gonna use a shape you can duplicate it, get rid of the bevel on it uh, for starters. You can convert it to a mesh if you need to. And in this case, I think I had a weighted normal on that, so it might end up acting up. But we'll try it on this one real quick. Shade it auto smooth. Auto smooth, anywhere it's sharp, this is the same as marking it as sharp. Okay, it splits the normals. That's what auto smooth does. Um, so we can use this normal split, right? That's what that's about. So um, if we Position this back into place. Well, I guess it's not going to snap into place where it needs to. So we can position it back into place basically, and we run it through a uh, quad remesher. We may use a high count or a low count, it just depends. But uh, you can see we've done such like this now. Okay. So that'll subdivide as well. We don't need to do that. Very clever little way of um, working a mesh like this. Okay. And you can do that on all kinds of different elements as well. So this one here, for example, get rid of the bubble. And now we'll move it out. Actually, let's convert that to a mesh real quick and then move it out. It would have to line up just right, which I don't think we'll get out of it, but yeah, it'd be somewhere around here anyways. So um, shade it auto smooth, quad remesh it. It's already done. You didn't notice it changed, but it did. It's um, all quads now. So, yeah, you don't necessarily have to model everything that's subdivision as subdivision at first. Okay. This gives you an idea of what's going to happen here. And I, I fully agree with the idea of doing something in subdivision in general. Uh, I think it generates better looking normal maps. And so, if we turn that little thing back on, we can kind of see what was going on here, perhaps, with the buttons and everything. Uh, it makes them a little bit more bold, a little bit softer. 
and I, I just think this looks a lot nicer personally as well like bigger bevels basically is what's going on here um so as long as you don't have any like crazy weird gaps like this like usually those kind of look weird in it when i see it rendered in on a normal but you know take your time uh, with this process anyways and you can definitely work boolean in gone to uh, subdivision real quick yeah, i don't really have any problems with it and so that's pretty much the commodore in a nutshell it's it was a fun little project. And remember that Boolean Ingon model only took 35 minutes. And to just clean it up and convert it to a sub D is still going to be way faster, I think, than um, trying to do it all from subdivision from scratch, right? And so uh, might be something you want to consider. But hopefully that makes it seem, maybe, hopefully that, you know, kind of opens up your mind a little bit to the idea of, you know, that Boolean Ingon is not exclusive to you know turning something into sub like subdivision is not exclusive like boolean and ingon can kind of go back and forth a little bit uh, between subdivision boolean and ingon and blah blah so forth anyways i think you get the idea right so all your workflow all your all these different terms are they don't really mean nothing it's just modeling that's all it is okay and so i'll check you out in the next video hope you enjoyed and see you there all right